And we are back. Joining me now is Diana Rabb. She is author of Healing with Words of Writer's Cancer Journey. Pleasure to meet you, Diana. Thank you. So you got the terrible news that everybody dreads. You had cancer. Right. And breast cancer, which actually is surprisingly common. We've done shows with a plastic and reconstructive surgeon saying that one in eight women actually has cancer or gets breast cancer mm -hmm. at one point. But you decided to deal with it a little bit differently than some people. You wrote a book about it. That was your way of... Healing. Yes. But what I also liked about the book was that it was actually just good from a medical point of view because, in other words, walking people through what happens, you know, your reactions. Because I love the fact that you were getting second opinions or going to other doctors and not just... Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether, I mean, you may have been focusing more just on, you know, on the healing side of it, but I just thought even just the way that you handled yourself mm -hmm. the whole way through was just a great example for people. Well, I'm a writer. I've been writing since I'm 10 years old, and um, I write to heal, and I also teach writing at UCLA t to help people heal from oh. various oh. Um, situations in their life, whether it's uh, cancer, whether it's divorce, whether it's the loss of a loved one. And uh, I'm also a nurse, and so that's why the book is sort of like, I call it a self-help memoir, because I want to help other women um, through their process. And it also has, you know, journaling prompts throughout the book so people can right, write their story. Right. And actually what inspired me to write the book was not necessarily the breast cancer, which was diagnosed and healed in 2001, which was the second cancer I was diagnosed with five years ago. Right. It's an uncurable, incurable cancer, but it, um, you know, I've just sort of decided not to make cancer my life. I want to uh, inspire others to journal out their feelings and to just move on with their life and think of, think of any um, mishap in your life as a riveting incident to move forward. And um, I, I don't like living you know, in the negative. I like rather living in the positive, and I try to teach others to do the same. Well, and honestly, the thing that I thought when I met you that is just that you're so vibrant and so full of energy, you know, as people say, but I mean, you know, you'd oh. never dream that you've had cancer or have cancer at all because you just... Thank you. Well, my, my husband was dropping me off, and he said, you know, people are going to want cancer if they look at you. And I said, that's a horrible thing to say, but he was sort of being funny, but it was his way of complimenting me. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to give a different face to that, like you say, the bad news, the C word. I uh, take care of myself, and I, I do a lot of journaling. And I think everybody ought to have a journal in their purse, in their, in their car, and just to write down your feelings. Just 20 minutes a day is all you need. Uh, and if you make it a regular practice, the benefits are absolutely huge. I think you quote Virginia Woolf saying it was a way to make kind of order out of chaos in life, you know, that, which I think is a nice way of thinking. Absolutely, absolutely. And if, especially if you do it regularly and you, you know, go to a bookstore and find a journal that inspires you and a pen. And uh, every day just to open the journal, 15, 20 minutes in the morning is the best time when we're sort of fresh and write down your thoughts. So some people like doing at the end of the day, like a gratitude journal. Mm. And um, it's also fun to look back at the journals years later. I journaled throughout my whole adolescence. I journaled, my first journal actually was my mother gave me when I was 10 when I, my grandmother committed suicide mm. and mm. she didn't Sorry. know how else to help me help cope and so she gave me a journal it became my best friend you were very close to your grandmother I was very close to my she raised me mm. and um, well that was like 45 years ago but you know I think we don't we deal with things differently as children as adults we tend to uh, dwell back and look back at the you know pains of our youth and we think about them more we sort of take things for granted when we're younger we just say we go with the flow sort of thing mm. so I as an adult I re, re you know restudied it and, but yes I've journal all the time and I encourage others to also. Now you've also what, set up a program or run a program to help pa cancer patients in particular or? Well I teach at UCLA Extension the writing program and I teach all kinds of people um, to write through their feelings whether it's um, high-risk teens, I teach high-risk teens as well, high-risk teens survivors of mm. abuse, um, people who've lost loved ones and cancer survivors. It's sort of like a mixed group. Anyone who feels the need to get the words on the page and they don't know how to start, you know, they just like well, I always wanted to write, I just don't know what to do and you know with the recent unemployment um, I had a huge turnout in my class because mm. people 
were so stressed out they didn't know what else to do so they said well let me see if I can write my feelings and uh, it was very healing for a lot of them and hopefully they're continuing after the course right, the next screenplay that's right <laughs> that's right yeah well there are some people that uh, were into that sure do you know from a medical point of view I mean I'm one of those people who wants to believe in the power of positive thinking and that sort of thing I mean are there any studies that show whether you know I mean I've heard things like environmental factors can influence outcomes I mean are you aware of any uh, I've really, you know, is it just for the mental peace of mind or that, or is there actually a physical side of this as well that you're aware of that, you know, that it can influence outcomes? So. You're talking about the healing power of writing. Right. Yes. Uh, yes, there's been a numerous studies. I guess the, the pioneer in this is Dr. James Pennebaker, and he's done some studies that actually shows that your immune response goes up mm. uh, with the writing process and just writing down your feelings and your, certainly stress release is something that happens when you're writing down your thoughts and your, and your concerns. So definitely, your it improves health, and and you can see it. You know, the he has done many studies on that. You were a little surprised early on when you were first diagnosed. I, you mentioned that um, I think one of the hospitals or one of the doctors or maybe someone you worked with had the idea that cancer patients were people who held everything in or maybe mm -hmm. that some kind of negativity or whatever maybe triggered it. I don't know if that mm -hmm. was the idea, but I think obviously that's not your take on it. That it doesn't come for you didn't feel that you ever repressed anything like that well I was actually a very quiet child you know I think after I lost my grandmother I was very quiet and did spend a lot of time reading and writing and mm -hmm. and I did keep a lot of things in I think only as an adult did I decide to you know that it was healthy to get things out so there is something in that you know that mm -hmm. um, cancer survivors very often are givers are very often do keep things in although I don't like making generalizations like that but there have been some studies in that area I know really? Louise Hay has done some some work uh, in that as well well with the breast cancer you were very smart as far mm -hmm. as getting early you know the, doing all of the, the mm -hmm. tests the mammograms and getting treatment and which is just crucial for something like that mm -hmm. yes early detection is is, is critical um, of course uh, I did not discover anything myself. It was just through an annual mammogram. There's no cancer in my family at all, and so mm. I was just diligent about my yearly mammograms. And luckily, it was early, and I uh, just needed to have surgery, big surgery. But I didn't have to have chemo radiation, so I was thankful for that. You know, a lot of women do have to go through that. But there's different, um, you know, there's different ways to heal cancer, and you know, some people decide to go the natural route also. And there's, I talk about that a little bit in the book. And the pros and cons and I also have a big section in there on how to actually start writing about your journey and I'm hoping other people I mean it doesn't mean that it has to lead to a published book but it might you never know well in our final minute what would you say to people who are looking for that healing whether it is for something physical or mental spiritual that sort of thing what what would you say to the people I would say that everybody ought to keep a journal and the benefits are huge and the perseverance and the regular keeping of a journal is just um, it's so much cheaper than therapy and mm. and something you can do yourself your on your therapist. own time. Your own therapist. <laughs> your own therapist. And really, the journal is also your best friend. It doesn't talk back. It it's there with you whenever you need it in the middle of the night, first thing in the morning. So I think everybody ought to keep a journal, whatever style or color they like. Now, separate from Facebook or MySpace <laughs> or the way we're all tweeting and twittering, and uh, no, no. but this is different. It's a, more of a private, formal. Right. It's for your eyes only, and the, the great thing is the grammar doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you spell things wrong or you cross out. I just suggest to my students, don't cross out and rip out too much, because then you won't have anything to look back to years later if you tear it out. We'll have to see so if you use any of the internet symbols like LOL or OMG. <laughs> that's right. That's well, right. thank you very thank much, Thank you so much, Diana Gregory. Rabb, nice meeting you. And much success with the program. And thank you. And helping other people. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.